Hey guys, it's Kevin again. This is going to be my review for Penny Dreadful, Season 1, Episode 7, Possession. And, wow, um, this was the final episode before the season finale, and wow, was it an amazing episode. This episode felt like The Exorcist. It was so creepy. It's by far the creepiest episode of this entire show. Also the best episode of the season. And, you know, as I said, I promised you guys I would be sitting here telling you that this episode was the best episode of the season, and it was. It really was. And you know what I love about this episode? I loved how creepy it was. I loved how, like, quiet this episode was. I liked how it only focused on one storyline. It was a lot like Closer Than Sisters. It focused on one storyline, and it stuck with that throughout the whole thing. However, the difference is this one had all the characters except for Brona, which I was fine with, personally, because... As much as I like Brona's character, she didn't have to be in this episode, and, um, in this episode, just, it, it was really awesome. So, as we know, um, Possession was perfect title for this episode, because, as we know, Van Vanessa's now possessed, and basically, the next morning, um, Vanessa wakes up in Malcolm's study, and ta talks of a woman's corpse, and it seems like everything's okay with her, and Malcolm tells her that she went into an unnatural spell that previous evening, and she notes that every, something must have changed, someone must have changed her dress and talks about how Malcolm never did that as a child because he was always away on one expedition or another. And Malcolm realizes that it's actually Mina talking to him. And Vanessa says that Mina is there somewhat. She then talks about how he despised his wife who wept when he was gone and took Laundrum, um, Laudanum to work. And Vanessa tells Malcolm to talk about the other woman he had. And Malcolm then closes the study door and tells Vanessa to stop, but she ignores and describes all the women he had in foreign lands. This, right away, very, very creepy. Like, seriously, really creepy. But Eva Green is just killing it in this episode. Like, seriously, she really was. Um, she took Peter to make him a man. A teacup shatters, and books and papers spin into the air. As the furniture starts to slide across the room, Sembean comes in, knocks Vanessa unconscious. The activity ceases. The servant carries Vanessa to her room without a word, and Malcolm looks around at the devastation. Like, that right away was just a great way to open up the episode. That was just a wow opening. So Vanessa then wakes up, and she looks at herself in the mirror, um, and Malcolm brings Victor... In to examine her, and she insists that she's quite well. Now, Victor has Malcolm leave, and then conducts a physical examination of the woman. As he applies a stethoscope, Victor asks what happened downstairs, and Vanessa claims that she doesn't remember. She says that there's violence when she that there's violence when she goes away, and she doesn't know where the, it is that she goes. And Vanessa assures her that, um, Victor assures her that he won't call it an alienist and suggests that she eat something, and then she'll start talking about Victor being a virgin, and that's really, and that's just, this was just really creepy, um, because she says that they have all, that they all have secrets, and quotes back what he said to Van Helsing shortly before the doctor's death. Now, Victor backs away in shock, and Vanessa offers to describe the demon. He feels more than her. And he tells her that examination has not yet begun, and then he walks out. So, he is freaked out by Vanessa. Like, that was really creepy, because she's like, oh, I'm fine. And then all of a sudden, she's back to possession. Like, it's that's how it is in this episode. And that's really awesome about this episode. It was really creepy, but definitely very well done. So, then, um, so then what happens is Victor meets Malcolm in the study, and... The explorer says that he summoned Ethan to help them because he thinks the only person that can help them is Ethan. <laughs> he admits that Vanessa has had similar spells before, to a lesser extent, um, to a lesser extent, and doesn't know what brought on this one. And Victor asks him if she has experienced sexual trauma in her in his life. If he is if she has experienced sexual trauma in his life, and Malcolm says that he has no idea. He assumes that Vanessa is not a virgin, and Victor suggests that her problem is psychosexual in nature. That makes perfect sense because if you guys remember, the first time that Vanessa was possessed, she had very rough sex with um with that one guy from, um, from Mina's, uh, you know, in, in the flashback. That was the first time that this happened. Then, when she had, and now that she has sex with Dorian Gray, now she's also possessed, so that makes perfect sense. If she, if she has, like, really rough sex, that's when she gets possessed. And, I mean, that's a really cool twist, because I knew it had something to do with her having sex. I don't know what it was, but that's what it has to do with. 
And Malcolm and, and basically Victor suggests that her problem is, is psycho na sexual nature, and someone has triggered it. And Malcolm confirms that Vanessa went out with Dorian, and Victor suggests that they had some manner of sex that generated guilt in her. Um, basically, yeah, he's assuming that they had sex, but he doesn't know what it is. And really, the guilt that got to her was the fact that it wasn't really, I don't think it was the guilt, I think it was more just the act. Um, so as they talk, Victor Eilie picks up one of Vanessa's tarot cards, stares in horror as a spider, and then we get probably the creepiest scene on this entire show so far. I mean, they're like, creepy scene, creepy scene, creepy scene. A spider crawls over it, and remember those spiders? More spiders emerge from beneath the other cards and fall off the table, covering the floor, and upstairs Vanessa screams in agony. Now, I kind of have a theory with those spiders, is that those spiders kind of mean that, um, and my friend Kane LaPlante, aka Kid of Awesome, I, I, we always, sometimes we watch shows, like, through Skype, and he came up with this theory, that when those spiders come up, come up here, like, when those spiders appear, that means that Vanessa is about to get possessed. That's really what that means. So... Outside, Ethan approaches the house and hears the screams. He comes in and Malcolm confirms that he brought his weapons and then leads him to Vanessa's room. And Vanessa is then crouched on the floor, moaning, and Ethan asks how he can help her. She says the thing inside her is too strong. Ethan takes her hand. Vanessa asks him if he had sex with Dorian, and Ethan backs away in shock as she asks if he enjoyed it, saying that they'll tell Brona. The demon then impersonates Brona's voice, saying that Brona had sex with Dorian as well. And that is huge. Oh my god, that was so huge. Because Ethan, of course, didn't know that. And now Ethan knows that D Brona had sex with Dorian. And uh, this is really big now. So Ethan's terrified. He's just like, no, thank you. I am terrified right now. So Malcolm tells Victor to give Vanessa a sedative. And she grabs Malcolm by the throat until they restrain her. The demon screams at them to leave Vanessa to, to him. And then starts muttering in Arabic as Vanessa, as Victor gives her a sedative. So down the study, Ethan has a drink and asks Malcolm what's wrong with Vanessa. And the explorer says that she's been possessed by a devil and believes there is a larger plan beyond what they've witnessed. He tells Ethan and Victor that Lyle believed Vanessa to be an incarnation of the Egyptian goddess um, Amunent. And will release untold horrors if it takes full possessions of Vanessa. So, that's really what she's possessed by. She's possessed by this, um, this, uh, this goddess called, uh, Amunent. And, uh, basically, Ethan wants to bring in a priest, but Victor dismisses it as a superstition, and Malcolm says that they can't bring anyone else into it. All Malcolm can suggest is that they can keep Vanessa alive while she fights off the demon possession, and show her that she is not alone. Um... Yeah, show her, show her that she is not alone, and he asks Ethan if he will stay and help them, and Ethan says that Malcolm knows he will. However, he asks Malcolm if he understood the Egyptian that Vanessa was saying, and the explorer says that she was saying, let me die. And that's really big that he understands what she was saying. So, basically now, they just have to find a way to unpossess her. So yeah, that it was really, as you can see, really intense here, and I, I was really, and I was really into it at this point. Because here's where it got awesome. Over the next few days, the four men attempt to keep Vanessa from hurting herself while providing her with food, and the strain proves all but intolerable. And Victor secretly injects himself with morphine for relief because it's just too much for him. She's basically just going crazy. So one night, Ethan is sitting at Vanessa's bedside. She wakes up as herself, finally, and he gets her water and offers to get her a priest to talk to him. It seems like everything's okay, but Vanessa admits that she's fallen from fate and doesn't think it would be any good. And she explains that she... And she explains that she doesn't remember all of what happened, but thanks Ethan for being especially kind and says that she might have fallen in love with him. And Ethan promises not to let her hurt us anyone. And Vanessa says that he's the only one who will do whatever it takes to stop her. Now, this is just huge because, as you know, Ethan has grown up. But Vanessa says she might have fallen in love with Ethan. So do you think that there's going to possibly be a relationship between Ethan and Vanessa? I kind of think that's where we're, we're heading with this. Um, that they're not telling us that. But I feel like that's where they're going with this. Um, that, that's just what I think. I, I don't know. That's, that was just an assumption. That's what I think, though. Um, so basically, as Vanessa takes his hand, Ethan says that he believes in, um, heaven. Sorry, guys, I'm getting text messages. 
Um, he believes, he, okay, he says that he believes in, um, in heaven. He knows the other place pretty well, and Vanessa realizes it, who she is really talking to with as the devil's eyes turn a solid black, and she asks if he is afraid because it turn, it, because it hides behind the face of others. Her term, her term, her, bleh, her tormentor says that what he fears most of all is a life thwarted and a destiny never achieved. Now, Vanessa vows to never give in, demands to know what he wants of her, and the devil says that he wants Vanessa at his side as he overthrows God and rules over a ruined world where there are no hearts to feel pain, kisses Vanessa and holds her to his, his chest. It's very intense here. So, Ethan sits alone, fingering the St. Jude's medal that Brona gave him, and Malcolm reminds him about his offer to go with him with Africa, and, and Ethan asks if he's running away again. Again, you know, he he chose him to go to Africa with him and not, um, and not Victor. So Malcolm um, reminds Malcolm that he killed his son, Peter, and Malcolm finally explains that he buried Peter in Africa and then continued on his expedition. Now he plans to bring his son's body home, but Ethan says that, that, that he's not that good. And that's huge, because now they could possibly bring Peter back to the show, which would be huge if that were to happen. So Vanessa screams, and the two men then run upstairs. Sambine and Victor are there, and Vanessa is clawing to, clawing to the, into the wall. She hallucinates hieroglyphics, covering her skin, and starts clawing at her wrist, trying to tear them off. The men restrain her so that Victor can give her another sedative, and later Victor goes to study with Malcolm and gives himself another morphine injection. He knows that it's an addiction brought on by pain, and Malcolm doesn't pursue the matter. The explorer goes to relieve Ethan, watch over Vanessa and Victor, and goes to the window. And then Caliban is standing outside watching. And Ethan comes in and wonders what they do now. And Victor says that he's going to try transfusions and vitamins to keep her alive to fight. However, he warns that he, they may have to kill her. And Ethan warns Victor that... And I was thinking that they were going to kill her in this episode. Because they said we might have to kill her. I was thinking they were going to kill her. So, basically, Ethan warns Victor that Malcolm isn't being honest with them about what he wants, about why he wants Vanessa to live, and the American talks about how the U.S. Army um, pacified Indian tribes and took their children away, raising them as white men, and when the children sometimes escape and return to their tribes, they are considered unwelcome strangers and roam and die. So Victor goes to the window and he confirms that Caliban is still outside and then asks Ethan for a favor. And that favor is that they go to the basement, Ethan shows Victor how to shoot a revolver, and then Victor proves unexpectedly um, he's actually very talented at shooting all the remaining bottles, and then Sambine comes down and said that Malcolm is wondering about the noise, and Ethan jokingly says that they're in trouble with Dad, um, and now it's kind of a funny scene. So, I like that they kind of have a comedy on this show, and I thought that was a nice, like, light-hearted scene. A good light-hearted scene, a very dramatic episode. So the men are eventually forced to, to, to restrain Vanessa to her own safety, because they have to make sure she's safe. And as Malcolm stands, uh, visual with Vanessa, Sambine sits outside, and Ethan, um, brings him some food. He sits with the African servant and makes him small talk, and finally asks the African, and finally asks what brought him to London. Now, Sambine refuses to discuss it, and Ethan suggests that Malcolm saved his life. The servant says that perhaps he saved Malcolm's life, and now the men is his own response, is his responsibility. And Ethan says that in the end, they all owe each other. And Sambine suggests that Ethan call a priest, but merely says that he believes in everything. Right here, this is where it starts to feel like the exorcist, because Vanessa is on a bed, restri like, basically just, like, in that position that the exorcist is in. Oh my god, it was so awesome. So then in the room, Malcolm is sitting next to Vanessa on the bed and tries to her to, and tries to her to focus on Mina and find her. Now Vanessa begs him not to ask it of her, saying that he wanted to be possessed so that she could find his daughter. And then Malcolm persists, and um, basically Malcolm Malcolm um, Malcolm persists, and Vanessa is sobbing and calls him cruel. Ethan then comes in and orders Malcolm to get away from her. Once they're outside. Ethan, um, says that it's time to end it, you know, it's time for all this to end, they have to end all this, and, uh, they then call in a priest, and when Malcolm says that Vanessa wants to die, Ethan says that they should have let her, and Malcolm suggests that they have the priest perform a rite of exorcism, and Victor tells them to stop it for the sake of decency, the explorer persists, and when Victor accuses him of murdering across the continent, Shoves the sign is against uh, the wall. Ethan breaks it apart and tells Malcolm that if he wants a daughter, Vanessa is the one who needs him. Who needs him? And after a moment, Vic Malcolm tells them to get a priest. As he walks off, Ethan vows that if Vanessa is right and Malcolm lets, him, lets her suffer to find his daughter, he'll rip his throat out. 
So then, Victor's in a study reading a book when Malcolm asks him for a stimulant so he could stay awake. And Victor administers a cocaine derivative and admits that they gave it to him for his asthma as a child, but led to his current um, addition. And Malcolm admits that they that he despised medicine, but Peter died when they lost their medicine in Africa. And he left Peter at the <clears throat> base camp to um, conduct an exploration, and his son was dead when he returned. Now, Malcolm discovered a mountain, and Peter asked him to name that after him. However, Malcolm named them after himself instead. As Victor stares at him, Malcolm says that he doesn't have a shred of decency left, which is pretty big. So... Then the priest finally arrives, and this the episode just gets awesome for me. It really, it really did. It, it got more awesome and awesome as it went on, but it really got awesome here. Because Father Matthews arrives, and Malcolm tells him that Vanessa's possessed, and that they have a um, that they hope a rite of exorcism might snap her out of it. Now the priest says that it is forbidden by the church without the permission, and a disgusted Victor tells him to administer the rites and get out. They take him up to Vanessa's room. Matthew stares at the devastated room. The dissected girl ties to the bed, and the dissected girl ties to the bed. When he tries to leave, it stops him, and Malcolm tells the priest to do it. And this just felt so much like The Exorcist. Oh my God, so creepy, just like The Exorcist. Really, really awesome stuff here. Because the priest begins the last rites and introduces himself and starts to um, <clears throat> daub Vanessa with holy water. <clears throat> she says that she knew another Matthew, and Dr. Matthew Banning, who tortured her with water, and another still a tax collector who is still cr crucified. And Vanessa then rips free, bites into Matthew's cheek, and throws him aside as she thinks that this is the same guy. She leaps to the ceiling, then drops on Malcolm, trying to rip his throat out. The others drag her away, as e and Ethan yells at Malcolm to get Matthews out. And as he does, Vanessa... Te um, telekinetically throws Victor out of the room and slams the door shut. That, this is by far the creepiest scene in the entire show so far. Um, Ethan then draws his gun, aims it right at her, shuts her side, and tells Vanessa that he isn't going to leave her. She advances on him, and Ethan grabs her and holds her against the wall, and after a moment, Vanessa regains control and begs Ethan to kill her. I thought they were actually going to kill Vanessa in this episode, because you know it's, it's the second to last episode before the finale. I thought they were going to kill her. So Ethan puts his revolver to her chest, and Vanessa waits for the fatal shot. However, Ethan takes Brona's medal and starts chanting in Latin, like, really loudly. Like, seriously, that was really creepy. We just start chanting in Latin. Places the medal on Vanessa's forehead, and she screams, chanting in tons. After a moment, she stops and collapses to the floor, and she's very, and then she's unconscious. And now satisfied, Ethan walks out past the others into the night. Malcolm enters the room and confirms that Vanessa is all right. And then the very end of the episode, this is really interesting, because Vanessa then sleeps through the night, and she's plagued by dreams of the Grand Gruisional, and he act and he actors um, talking of um, claws and teeth that rend. We see all these flashbacks of Mina, and she then goes to Malcolm and tells him that she knows where Mina is, which is at that theater. So yeah, this was a huge episode. I absolutely love this episode. I thought it was an amazing episode. And it's going to be an amazing finale because now they know where Mina is. And Vanessa being possessed, I don't know if it's over. I don't think it is. I think she's probably going to get possessed next week. But I'm really looking forward to the finale. This show has gotten better and better and better every single episode. This was by far the best episode of the season. I absolutely loved it. Um, just wow, such a great episode tonight. Um, I, I mean, last night, I really enjoyed the episode. Um, also, I do want to talk a little bit about the finale, though. Now, there are a couple of things besides the whole Mina thing that we do have to talk about. Of course, there's a whole thing with Africa, um, which is pretty big. What's actually going to happen? Do you think they're going to be able to bring back Peter? Because Ethan said he could try to bring back Peter in Africa, so do you think they'll be able to do it? Um, we really, um... We really don't know. Um, so, possibly... Possibly, is there a way that they could possibly resurrect him somehow? I think Victor is going to try to resurrect Peter. We're going to see if that happens, but that would be pretty big if that happened. Also, um, what's going to happen with Brona? Obviously, um, Brona's going to find out that um, Ethan had sex with Dory, and he's going to have that guilt on him. He's going to have to tell her eventually. Um, what, how's Ethan gonna react when he, when he tell, you know, is Ethan gonna tell Brona that he knows that her and Dorian had sex? I don't think he knows that they had sex before him. Um, Vanessa made it seem like she cheated on him, um, which technically he cheated on her, which is true. Um, also, what's gonna happen with, um, what's gonna happen with Mina? How are they gonna find Mina? Is everything gonna be okay? I have a feeling here's what's gonna happen. 
Vanessa die. If Vanessa dies, Mia's gonna be main character next year. If she doesn't die, I still think Mia's gonna be main character next year. I have a feeling that um, either they're gonna have to kill Mina or they're gonna make a truce somehow. I don't know what's gonna happen, but Grand Guizhnal is the title of the next episode, so it's gonna be a really awesome finale. I know it's gonna be awesome. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, also, Caliban, as we know, Caliban is waiting right outside. And Victor needs to Victor needs to make that bribe for him, or else Caliban's gonna go killing people off. So obviously, um, Victor needs to do what Caliban asked, or else Caliban's gonna be pissed at him, and it's not gonna be good for Victor in the end. So we're gonna see what happens there. But um, yeah, overall, I absolutely love this episode. As usual, amazing episode, best episode of the season by far. I have a feeling next week's also gonna be best episode of the season. And, yeah, that's been my review. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys in my next video, which will be my review for the, um, the season premiere of Falling Skies. So I'll see you guys for that. Okay, bye.